So I want to say and I'm pretty hyped about this one, guys. This machine was on my wish list. And at this point in my vintage sewing machine game, there's not a whole lot left on there. This is a 1954 beige <laughs> Singer 301A. When I saw it on the shelf at the Goodwill, my local Goodwill where I shop and I purchased this at, it was just sitting on the shelf. Clear as day, anyone could have walked up and nabbed it. I was the only one around, you know, it was like one of those moments like, is this for real? <laughs> is this real life? My heart was like racing. I couldn't believe it. I immediately reached for it. And then that feeling of excitement immediately sank because I picked it up by this nifty little handle that's here. And I was immediately concerned that it was so lightweight. I thought maybe the motor was missing. I just didn't know <laughs> that this only weighs 16 pounds, which is two pounds more than the Singer Featherweight. I knew it was a portable machine. It just didn't register in my head that this was also a very lightweight machine. I'm used to these vintage machines, you know, when I pick them up, there, there's some heft to them. They weigh in around the 30 to 33 pound range. So, you know, it's like a little bit of a workout. So this was like a pleasant surprise. I was genuinely surprised. Apparently from the tag, it had been sitting there for a couple of weeks and I just couldn't believe it. Now, I do think maybe because there was some damage done to this machine, that's why it was sat there so long. Or, you know, a lot of people just aren't, they want a newer machine, right? Because new somehow translates to works better. Now, this machine <laughs> is going to prove that so wrong. New does not mean better. I have to admit, I am really blown away. And I've read all the hype. This is why this machine made my wish list because there's so much hype. There's so much favorable talk about this. Now I will say there's also the same for the Singer Featherweight. I don't, I don't personally have experience with a Featherweight. I've only seen one in person once and I don't have Featherweight money. For a portable machine, I think this is a great alternative to the Featherweight just from my few days of working on it and using this machine. And I'm going to tell you why, and I'm going to tell you exactly what I paid for it, the parts cost and what I had to do to get her up and running. Let me show you what I did. Okay. Before I get into the details about the work that I did to the machine, I just want to point out with every machine that I get and attempt to run, I always clean it. I clean the exterior with sewing machine oil only. That is just something that I found that works for me. If I think it's really dirty, I will leave the oil on to penetrate and loosen up any dirt or buildup that it might have. I always find the manual online. Many of Singer's machines have the manual PDF forms that you can download and reference online, and they will tell you where to oil and grease your machine. So I always check to look at things to make sure it doesn't look gross inside. I do a light cleaning. Usually um, this machine only required a light cleaning. Internally, it looked really, really great. I oil and grease the machine where it says to. All right, just moving it around a little bit. This seems to, yeah take that off and this can't be good this wire is smashed this wire is smashed because it was smushed between this housing so that I personally would not recommend that so in store when I'm considering buying a vintage machine I kind of have like a little process and I have a video about that and I'll link it I immediately noticed a couple things wrong with this machine and um, number one Again, this is a thing that doesn't really matter to me, but the paint was chipped. There was quite a bit of dirt. It was missing a bolt here on the bed extension. Two of the most notable things that I noticed that was wrong. It was missing the bobbin casing, which I did have to go buy a replacement one. This does take a, a different bobbin 
than a standard Singer machine. There's a whole nother video about the different bobbins each machine takes. That's something you always need to look up and make sure that you have the correct one. Her thread guide was bent, like mangled. That thankfully is an easy piece to find and replace. The, the thing that I was actually taking a chance on here was the tension assembly. It was facing downwards. It was smushed in. It looked like somebody kicked it or dropped it. I decided to be gutsy here, take it home. Cause I knew, I figure even if I couldn't get it working, I could sit on it for parts in the future. If I did get another one that was maybe not in the best condition, but my story ended up being much, much better. And let me tell you about some of the features about this machine. So while this did take a bit of work to get it into this condition, I was still skeptical about its actual function, but again, I just have to tell you, I'm so blown away with how quiet this is. The stitches look the same front and back. I, I had to Google that to make sure that was like, was that a feature for this machine? And sure enough, it, it says it that, you know, um, the stitch looks the same front and back. It's completely amazing. Other little things that I like about this machine. I do have the short bed. I kind of, I kind of like the bobbin right there. Real easy to swap in and out. Other things that I really like about this machine. A, it has a cute little handle. It's so cute. It was really easy to thread. There was only one way to put the needle in and there was no guessing there. You didn't have to fiddle it around. It only goes one way. Everything is so quiet when you stitch. This one was a fun thing this spool holder i hadn't seen this on a machine before it's flexible it kind of reminds me of an old school door stopper <laughs> uh really it's a it's a cool feature since it's portable i thought well okay so now i have a portable machine if i decide to go visit my sister and do a little sewing because she's one of my inspirations for sewing my oldest sister i'm actually naming this machine catherine in her honor she is a quilter she's uh, super talented so i i got real happy with just the idea of you know whenever i have time to to go down and visit her i'm going to bring my machine so i can sew right next to her so before i get into work details let me tell you about the price for things i bought it at goodwill they had it tagged at 34.99 i happened to buy it on a red tag sale day which gave me a 30 percent off discount so with that and sales tax it cost $26.93. I knew I'd have to make a further investment on the missing pieces I needed. For the bobbin case and bobbins, it was $22 on Amazon. And for parts, I purchased from a local quilt shop in my area. Uh, the bed extension screw, the needle clamp thread guide, and the top thread guide all cost $26.96. So all in, my total investment was $75.89. I've unscrewed the top because I'm going to take it off oh, before I go in there. The thread guide is broken, but I know that's a, a fixable part. I could even make that myself in theory if I knew what gauge this was. What I am going to do is I'm just going to order the $5 part. For that but that's a bummer okay I took the top off I'm replacing the thread guide here this was damaged when I got it I gotta take out the remaining bits and put in the new one so I'm coming at it from underneath just because it seems like this paint scratches pretty easily I don't know for sure and I'm not trying to find out rubber mallet that just in gently. Okay, I can't easily pull it out, so I'm just gonna call that good for the moment. The tension assembly. I, I Like I said, it was angled downwards, and I was a little worried about that because it was completely bent. 
I did my best with straightening it out. It is not perfectly straight. I'll show you a little bit of work that I did to, to make that happen. Okay, I've done some cleaning and then I've done some discovery here. My tension knob was kind of screwed in at an awkward angle or it could have been hit. So I'm taking it apart and cleaning it. There was something else I had discovered. I am missing the rear screw in the back there. I already mentioned the front thread guide. Just small things so far, nothing major. Hopefully this is nothing major. I disassembled and cleaned the entire tension assembly. Like I said, it was angled downwards and bent lightly. I tried to bend it back as best as I could and I gave it a good deep cleaning and I reinstalled it. This is the one that I pulled off of the 301A and this is a spare one that I had. This is what it should look like. And you gotta screw this screw in while holding this into place in a horizontal setting like that. I forgot to mention that the tension releasing pin is also in there and it's cleaned and moving as it should. All right, and this is it installed. I have the little screw set back in there. I've checked my work to see if that little pin, let me see if I can point it. There's a little pin right here, the one that I mentioned that I took out of the screw that holds the tension assembly together. And I'm checking my work. Presser foot is down, presser foot is up, presser foot is down, presser foot is up. That little pin there. Not only looking at the, the pin in the tension that was in the long screw bit, but you can see the movement in the actual tension knob. Like keep, keep your eyes on that. See, little movement. I think this is all back together correctly. I got that little bit of push that this one is supposed to have. It might be a little tight. And I think this is out maybe a little too far. I don't know. I'll have to just play with it in a moment, but so far so good. So before I ordered parts for this machine, because I knew I needed a screw for the back and I knew I needed a top thread guide here. I, I gave it a once over just to make sure I didn't miss any little bits and I am so glad that I did and I highly recommend you doing that as well. I ended up finding out that I, I had a broken piece here in the needle holder. This little guy was broken so I would have been big mad if I had put everything back together and oiled it and, and greased it properly and I couldn't actually sew with it because I needed that little nubbin for the thread to hang on to so the tension would work properly. I will put all the details of each piece that I needed to purchase in the description so if you are giving a 301A a once over like I am you'll know where to go. Okay so this has a flat side and a notched beveled side and this is the front. I remember because I took this apart and you know as you maintain your own machines you learn how things go and <laughs> I might embarrass myself here on the internet but I'm just going off of memory and of how things came out. Now I didn't actually have this bar piece previously. Here's my original bit but I know from its placement that it's part of the, the thread guide. And also looking at the manual told me that too. So I know this was a part of this. And I guess the fun part here is to put this all up in there together. Now, I know this feels like it rests right in there and I could see where the needle should go up in there as well. And then there's a, there's a couple screws to secure it. So I'm gonna try to put this all in here together. Oh, it's real simple. Okay. 
so I need to grab a screwdriver, I guess. I wasn't, <laughs> I thought I was gonna have to fiddle with that for a second. This oddly went super fast and super easy and I checked my work, but so far so good. Now I'm gonna go grab a needle. I will say it definitely matters to those who are new to these machines. It definitely matters the position of how you put that needle in. So double check your manual for how it tells you to go in. One thing I know about these machines is that the bobbin casing is also compatible with the featherweight. And unfortunately mine is missing that casing, but I know that you can buy reproduction ones, or if I wanted to be real spendy, <laughs> buy an official one. Uh, the power cord was completely sketchy. <laughs> So it already had electrical tape on it and I, I didn't feel comfortable plugging that in. So my husband who works on electronics as his hobby, he thankfully was able to do this very quickly. I do think this is something I could do on my own without his help. I'm just more comfortable with belts and gears. Okay. So I guess all that's left to share is how does she sew? Now, for these videos, I like to do a project that would have been of the era when this machine was manufactured. Again, this was manufactured in 1954, but unfortunately for me, I didn't have anything specific from 1954, but my sister-in-law down in Oregon had sent me a big stash of vintage patterns that she picked up from a seamstress down there. And this is from the 50s. This is Butterick. 7288. It is a morning coat, which I thought would be perfect for me to toss on uh, in the springtime to do my chicken chores first thing in the morning. And there is even a big pocket to hold some eggs. I don't recommend doing that. I figured I'd give this a go. This is a nice, easy project to do. And um, let's take this 301A on a little spin here. The fabric that I chose for this project is a Kona Bay fabric. It is a Shadowland 4 in shade Cinnamon. I don't personally sew over my pins. Um, normally, I have done it before, but I have had needles break and there's nothing more than I, I hate more than that. I've been a crazy chicken lady now for almost a year and my ladies are very much very chicken about new things so it was really surprising to see how they reacted to me bringing a sewing machine outside near their coop. I really love the way this turned out. I even had the opportunity to use some vintage buttons from my stash, and it's a great lightweight item I can easily toss on. I hope you guys felt my excitement and a complete love for this machine. I am so excited. I am so thrilled to own one and get to use it. It's just amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Highly recommend it. And I want to thank you for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Well, we're still recording. Okay. You guys want to come up? Oh. You should record at least a few seconds. Okay. I'll be here. Hi, girl. Red chicken. Red chicken. Yeah, I mean, you can come out here.
like, I don't know. 